Next, to start the second half, we have uh, Ben Saunders. That uh, Azerbaijani beer is playing havoc on me. Here we are. Ben Saunders. Ben looks very good in a big fur hood and goggles. Um, so, Ben is a very good friend of mine. He's been a good friend for many years. He was one of my early inspirations that this, this expedition life is something that's worth attacking full tilt on. He's a very good man. He's not very good at small details in life. So he hadn't sent me his introduction for what I should read out before the talk. So I texted him yesterday saying, hi Ben, what would you like me to say in your intro tomorrow evening? Ben replies, thanks Al. The usual, short, bald, over the hill, solo to both poles, longest ever polar journey on foot. I thought that'll do. So please welcome Ben Saunders. Thanks, Al. Thank you, Al. Um, hello, everyone. My name... Oh, do you need to start the slides? Where is it going to... Do you want me to press it? <laughs> you can't get the... You can't get the star. Sorry, Ben. Sorry? There we go. Um, I am usually introduced as a polar... Explorer, which, which, which clearly is a ludicrous job title. Um, it's not a job that my careers advisor at school ever mentioned as an option, um, probably because there are only two poles to explore, and, and they were both <laughs> found um, a long time before I was born. So, so uh, the most common question I'm asked is, is, is how, how did this happen? Um, and um, the honest answer, which I don't normally, normally tell, but I will share with you, is that I blame my dad, who did a runner when I was quite, quite small, 10 years old, and left a big gaping hole for 26 years um, for me to sort of look up my own uh, male role models. These are three of my sort of top trumps. Uh, um, uh, oh, no, too, too, too late for that, sorry. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the, um, I better hurry up. Uh, the, moral, the moral to my story, I'll skip that bit, is, is that uh, with enough self-belief, enough determination, pretty much any of the, your daftest childhood dreams can come true. Um, I've led 12 expeditions now. I've covered 7,000 kilometers on foot uh, in a sledge harness in the polar regions, uh, 2% of my entire life. This, this is what 7 thousand uh, kilometers looks like more or less uh, four four thousand three hundred miles um, dragging my sled around two percent of my entire life uh, uh, living in a tent on the snow melting snow to get drinking water um, and I'm glad Al met, where, where, where's he gone he's done a run up there he is I'm glad Al mentioned earlier our, our plans to get to Antarctica and the fact that we were credit crunch because the other story I don't often tell is the, the, the really hard pit because the dragging a sledge around at minus 40 is the easy part the hard part is how expensive these camping trips are so imagine each one of these is £10,000 this is how much I've raised and how much I've spent on 12 expeditions since 2001 so this is about three million quid. Um, the last, the, the first ten years of my career were spent um, uh, looking at, well, looking at more than looking at it, but walking, wandering around the far north, um, trying to get to the North Pole. The North Pole is slap bang in the middle of the sea. So if you're if you're daft enough to try to get to the North Pole on foot, you've got to drag a sledge over. It's it, it's a huge bit of sea, 5.4 million square miles of Arctic Ocean. Um, so the next 10 years were spent aiming at this place. This is Antarctica, uh, coldest, windiest, driest, highest altitude place on Earth, twice the size of Australia. Uh, between October 2013 and February 2014, um, I set out to walk with my teammate Targa from the bottom of this line down here, uh, Ross Island, to the South Pole, which I can't reach, I'm short, uh, back, to, back to Ross Island again. Uh, that's to give you an idea of scale. It was a, a round trip of exactly 1,801 statute miles, which is uh, about 69 marathons back to back. We were pulling 200 kilos each, which is two fat blokes in a bathtub each. Um, for, for, for 70 marathons, uh, best summed up, I think, by this Malaysian version of Business Insider. Two explorers uh, just completed a polar expedition that killed everyone um, the last time it was attempted. Um, the, uh, my mum's never been that happy about the, the sort of trajectory of my career um, to date. But the, um, the people that it killed were, were, were these guys. This is Captain Scott and his team of five. They, of course, as hopefully all of you know, arrived at the South Pole January 1912 to find, to their horror, they'd been beaten to it by Roald Amundsen. You, well, you can't see it's black and white, but his flag, the Norwegian flag, flying on the far left. They turned around, started walking 900 miles back to the coast. All five died on the return journey. It had never been finished since. So we thought, uh, Tarka and I, that this would, well, actually, Al and I originally, thought this would be an interesting camping trip to attempt. Now, unlike uh, Scott or Shackleton or Amundsen, we didn't have any, any support team. We had no, uh, no dogs, no ponies, 
No tractors, uh, pulling everything ourselves, uh, 200 kilos each, 440 pounds. And if you've seen a documentary about Antarctica, it's full of penguins and, and seals and sea lions and killer whales. You've been wildly misled. Most of Antarctica is n nothingness. Uh, the first leg of our journey was walking in a straight line for 28 days across the Ross Ice Shelf that looked uh, exactly like that. We saw we start each day seeing nothing at all, 360 degrees. That's looking back behind where you've come from. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it's, it, it, this is one of the biggest challenges of Antarctica, that just the sheer scale of the place. It, 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 it's like Mongolia with no hills, no valleys, no horses, no trees, nothing at all. Blank, white, nothingness. Um, in Tarkanai's case, for 108 days, three and a half months, uh, we changed our underwear three times. Well, we didn't wash at all. Uh, arrived at the South Pole after 61 days. Now, the South Pole is a kind of weird place. There's a big American scientific base there. They have a, a basketball court that doubles as a movie theater, giant canteen, central heating. So it's a very different South Pole to the one that Scott uh, found. And for us, it represented temptation. So we just turned around as quickly as we could, started walking back the coast. We were pretty knackered by this point. Um, this is Tarka. This is a special occasion because he is changing his underwear. Um, <laughs> but um, you can see he's looking pretty skinny. We, we both lost a lot of weight. Um, uh, it's a long way to go to, for, for, for a diet. But um, Tarka lost... <laughs> Uh, 24 kilos, I lost 22 kilos. We were really at the sort of ragged edge of our endurance. And after 108 days, we reached this pretty inauspicious looking finish line. This was the, the biggest anticlimax of my entire life. I'd always imagined that Tarka and I, for the last hour, would be skiing along in tears, high fiving, back slapping, flying a flag. There would be soft rock piped out of the heavens, you know, eye of the tiger. And, and, and we were like two grumpy old men, um, just desperate to unclip our sledgehammers and never have to go back again. And of course, I have gone back again, like an idiot. Uh, this was uh, about 12 weeks ago. Uh, this, this sort of ridgy uh, stuff is, is called sastrugi, uh, wind-blown ridges in the snow. I went down there to try to make the first solo crossing of Antarctica, um, completely unsupported, unassisted. This was the journey that Henry Worsley uh, died trying to attempt two years ago. He was a great friend of mine, so I was trying to finish it really for him uh, to support the same charity. The weather was rubbish. Uh, Eric Phillips, a veteran Australian guide, said the worst conditions he'd seen in 25 years. Um, so uh, you can see this, this is a complete whiteout. I think one in four days I was down there was completely wiped out. And I decided uh, when I got to the South Pole for the second time that that was uh, more than enough uh, time spent in a sledge harness. I, I, I'd, I'd arrived there. Um, I got there about six days late. Um, I had a finite amount of food, 65 days of food in the sledge. So arrived there, uh, um, uh, yeah, six days uh, sort of beyond my schedule um, without enough food to make it all the way across the other side. So I stopped there. This is my last slide. And I put this here to remind me that this is not all um, uh, you know, suffering and, and bankruptcy and, and frostbite and starvation and, and chafing. Uh, but there are moments of absolute magic. This is walking up a feature called the Gateway. Uh, this is the entrance to the Beardmore Glacier, discovered by Shackleton. Um, you can count on three hands the number of people that have walked up there. And I'm going to finish by borrowing Lucy's words. Um, I, I normally would say something more motivational, but I think um, there was some real magic in what she said, which is just go. Thank you.